Condoleezza Rice was at the very core of George W. Bush's administration. She was present for most of the major and fateful decisions taken by the president. Few figures were closer to him than Dr. Rice, who went from National Security Advisor to Secretary of State in a period of international crisis. She describes those years vividly in her new memoir, which is dedicated to the men and women in uniform. During Rice's time in office, of course, there were two wars, Afghanistan and Iraq, with major loss of military and civilian lives. Condoleezza Rice joined me a little earlier from her home state of Alabama, and I began by asking if she ever wondered whether the considerable loss of life was worth it. Well, first of all, I am very glad that we continue uh, to remember the veterans of the many wars that have been fought on behalf of freedom. Uh, we here in the United States, of course, also celebrate Veterans Day uh, during this weekend. The loss of life uh, is, is never easy to take, uh, and indeed you can't bring those people back. And those of us who are responsible for decisions that send uh, men and women to war uh, will live with that. But I think it's also true that nothing of value is ever won without sacrifice. And uh, after September 11th, it was very necessary to think again about security, to think again about the nature and the status of the Middle East, uh, in Afghanistan to deal with the safe haven that had been there for al-Qaeda, and in Iraq to deal with Saddam Hussein, who had been a cancer in the region for 10 years. He was a monster in the middle of the Middle East, and so, yes, I believe that it was uh, a sacrifice worth making, although, of course, uh, the many lives lost uh, will haunt us forever. We do have a situation, however, where, to a many people, it appears that, frankly, we're losing in Afghanistan, bit by bit, and ultimately what we don't have is the sort of democratized, more stable Middle East um, that many people, including yourself, I'm sure, hoped would happen as a result of that war. Well, it takes a long time for democracy to take hold. Freedom is one thing, uh, democracy is another. The institutionalization of that freedom uh, sometimes takes decades. Uh, even here in my own country, the United States of America, a mature democracy, my father couldn't vote in 1952. And so we have to remember that history has a long arc. And uh, in Iraq, I do think we are seeing uh, democratic institutions emerge. It will take time for their fragility uh, to give way to a more stable democracy. And what about Iran? Because uh, the, the biggest crisis really at the moment in the region is over the latest developments um, in their uh, attempts to get, if that's what they're doing, nuclear weapons uh, and missile heads. Do you take seriously the possibility of um, the West going to war with them to stop that or preemptive strikes? Yes, I think over the years we're getting more and more confirmation of what we all really knew, that Iran is uh, intent on a nuclear uh, weapon and one that would be usable. And so, yes, I think the threat of uh, the use of military force is real. Uh, the Israelis are not going to stand for an existential threat to their state. Um, I think the American president should never take military force off uh, the table. I read that the Russians and Chinese said uh, but, something about not backing the Iranians into a corner. It's time to back the Iranians into a corner diplomatically, and we can do so with tougher sanctions. Tougher sanctions, but also absolutely clearly and explicitly the threat of military strikes if they don't change course. I think you have to at this point. Um, it may well be, and I'm uh, really a believer that uh, regime change is really going to be our only choice here. Now, if the regime changes its policies, it will be a different kind of regime, and we need to continue to work for that. Uh, but the Iranian regime, which is seeking a nuclear weapon, which is the poster child for state sponsorship of terrorism, and which demonstrated in uh, June of 2009 that it no longer has any legitimacy uh, among its people, uh, it is really time now to deal seriously with that regime. Uh, the time for uh, sanctions that are a kind of lowest common denominator uh, has passed. And do you think this should start with the Israelis or do you think it should be the Americans um, attacking directly? Well, I don't think we yet need to make a decision to actually use military force, but the Iranians should know and know in no uncertain terms that uh, military force is a, a real option and one that is uh, growing in salience uh, because of their behavior. Looking from the outside during um, the what we might call the, the Bush Wars period, what your book reveals is just how divided and riven some of you were. Um, 
you are particularly critical of the vice president at the time, Dick Cheney, um, who you see as really very, very hawkish to the point where he wasn't even prepared to listen to the possibility that Saddam Hussein might not have been involved in 9-11. Well, the president wanted strong opinions around him. No president should be in a position of groupthink among his mm. advisors. And uh, I know that there was a bit uh, of a caricature of the Bush administration that the president only had people around him who told him what he wanted to hear, uh, people who didn't argue vociferously, he didn't have options before him. And I wanted very much in this book uh, to show that he was someone who was able to listen to strong opinions mm. and strong personalities. But it was also the case, um, it appeared that there was very little really good planning for what would happen to Iraq afterwards, and the country fell into bloody chaos. And yes. um, your department and the people around you had been thinking about what should happen afterwards, but it was because the Pentagon, according to your book, it was because the Pentagon took total ownership of that, that it turned out that there wasn't a proper plan. Well, someone, uh, some agency had to take ownership for the uh, post-war, what we called phase for mm. phase four, which is after Saddam was actually overthrown. And it made sense for it to be the Pentagon. But uh, frankly, I don't think that the uh, phase four uh, operations were uh, properly planned. Maybe there was a, a bit of a hope that the uh, Iraqi exiles would easily uh, ride back into Baghdad and, and take control. Uh, that was obviously not the case. And uh, we made some mistakes. Uh, the disbanding of the army uh, was, uh, in retrospect, uh, a mistake. In any complex operation, there are going to be uh, mistakes. And I take, my, I take responsibility for some share of them. Uh, but I do think that uh, we, we could have done better and that uh, the Pentagon could have done better. And we, frankly, didn't have enough troops then in the country, uh, we, Britain, uh, the other allies, uh, to deal with the aftermath of the war. What about um, the hugely controversial way that um, terrorist suspects were treated at Guantanamo and the, the rendition system, the waterboarding, all of those things which so damaged America's reputation around the world? Well, I would say controversial, certainly, because we were in a new kind of war. Uh, the president was determined that we would uphold uh, our laws, uh, that we would use uh, every, uh, every weapon available to us that was both uh, legal and uh, necessary. And yes, we had to do some very tough things uh, because with a terrorist, uh, you can't treat it like law enforcement. Uh, what you have to do is prevent the next attack. And every day, we thought that uh, the next attack was coming. You've seen um, most, um, perhaps all, of the, the darkest um, secrets, the, the, the secret fears of the United States. Now, what wakes you up in the middle of the night, if anything does? What, what really worries you in security terms right yes. now? Well, certainly in security terms, uh, Iran worries me, as it should everyone. It's, it's probably the single most dangerous state uh, in the international system right now. I worry a great deal about Pakistan. Um, I just don't think that there is the urgency on, behalf of the, on, on the part of the Pakistani government to deal with its, uh, the extremists among the uh, various institutions there. And so I worry about those hot spots. But when I look at that chaotic world out there and I recognize that throughout my lifetime, the United States has been willing and Americans have been willing to step up and do the hard jobs of leadership, I'm concerned that our own internal problems uh, may uh, bring our attention back home and that you may see an America that is less willing to lead. The psychological effect um, on leaders is often underestimated. There was an extraordinary moment when I think you were told that both the president and you had been poisoned. Yes, uh, we were in Shanghai for the rescheduled uh, Asia Pacific Economic Council meeting um, in October. We were operating and we were fighting in Afghanistan and so every morning we would have a a co video conference between the president, Colin Powell, Andy Card, myself, and back in Washington, the vice president and Steve Hadley, the deputy national security advisor. And on that particular morning, the vice president told us that the White House uh, detection system had detected botulinum toxin. It is a nerve agent for which there was no known antidote and that we had all been exposed. 
um, and that we would likely die. And it was put pretty much that bluntly. Mm. Um, fortunately, when the samples were uh, tested at the Centers for Disease Control, uh, it turns out to have been a false alarm, but I will never forget Steve Hadley with his uh, maybe slight, slight black humor, as we would call it, saying uh, that the, the test would be made and if the mice were feet down, we were fine. If the mice were feet up, we were toast. And uh, when we got the word that the mice were indeed feet down, I passed that to the president who was sitting next to the president of China. Um, I'm sure the Chinese must have thought we were speaking in some kind of code. The psychological impact of that level of stress and, and concern for those numbers of years must have been enormous. Yes, the psychological impact was uh, enormous, but uh, the way that you keep going is that you realize that there's something you can do about it. And uh, the something that you can do about it is to be vigilant, uh, to work hard to make sure that an attack never happens again. But yes, they were enormously stressful times. And finally, last question. Um, it's often been said that of all the administration senior figures at the time, you're the only one with um, a potential political future of your own if you want one. My question is what would tempt you back into the fray, if anything? I'm a political, I'm not a political person, I'm a policy person, and I know the difference. Um, I'm very glad that we have people uh, in our great democracies who want to run for office. We need them. Uh, I'm simply not one of them. Condoleezza Rice.